right now on News Channel 8 at 8. I didn't see it coming. I, I love my son with all my heart. I hate what he did. Tonight, we're getting a glimpse inside the life of the man responsible for the deadliest attack on law enforcement since 9-11. That was overwhelming. We, we didn't realize we were going to get that type of response. As violent protests erupt across the country, Tampa's police department is praising demonstrators for coming together to make peaceful change. To leave his family, to leave his job, do what he does for our country is, is a great sacrifice. Uh, it takes a special person. He fought for his country overseas. Now a dedicated veteran's getting a hero's welcome as he returns to fight fires here at home. News Channel 8 at 8 begins now. Good evening, I'm Jen Holloway. I'm Keith Kay. Thank you for joining us tonight. Right now, police are shutting down several major streets in downtown Tampa. Eagle 8 HD was just above this Black Lives Matter protest. Several hundred people are now calling for an end to all of the police violence we've been reporting on. Protesters have been marching through downtown now for more than an hour. Police are blocking the on-ramp to I-275 to try to keep this under control. So far, as far as we know, it's all been nice and quiet, no violence erupting. Paul Mueller joins us now live from the ground. Paul, you've been covering several of these protests, but looks like this is one of the largest one that we've seen in quite some time. Yeah. This is one of the most largest ones we've seen in the Bay Area for quite some time. I want you to take a look right here. You can see that the protest is going on right here at Gaslight Park. This is where it ended just a few minutes ago, and this is where it actually began at 6 o'clock right over here. Now, it's quiet right now, but I want to go ahead and show you this way over here if we can get through here. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We can get through here. You can see the police blockade right here. What protesters had done had essentially uh, walked up North Ashley Street and police had blocked them off one side of the street and it was a zigzag all the way up to the North Ashley Drive ramp to 275. That is where police took a very firm stance. They did not want these protesters to get on to 275 as we've seen this both in Minnesota as well as uh, some other area cities, major cities like Atlanta as well. Of course, all of this comes in the wake of those two shootings, Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as well as Philando Castile. And you can see that police are still out here. It began with uh, about six police officers on bicycles, but that quickly turned into at least three, maybe four dozen police officers who needed to make sure from their perspective that no one got onto the interstate. And that is exactly what happened. The good news out of all this, yes, there were some big time verbal confrontations between certain protesters and police, but at the same time, no injuries, no one arrested. But right now it is beginning to rain just about two hours after this whole protest started. Who knows what the rain is going to do? No word from protesters if they're going to continue. Are you going to continue right? Okay. There you have it from some of the protesters right here. They will be right here tonight. Again, uh, Black Lives Matter and Tampa for Justice, both of those groups putting this on hundreds of people coming out here today. We'll have the full wrap up coming up tonight on News Channel 8 at 11. But for now, guys, back to you in the right. studio. Thank you, Paul. And you do have some dark storm clouds overhead. We'll get more from Julie in just a minute. In the meantime, protests are also being held all across the country. You're taking a live look here in Chicago, where the streets there are packed with protesters. Demonstrators hope peacefully disrupting the traffic there will help draw attention to excessive force. And we do have some severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for those storms that are heading towards downtown Tampa. So the recommended advice would be to head inside because this isn't just some rain showers moving through. These are some strong storms. So a severe thunderstorm watch for parts of Pasco and Hillsborough, Hillsborough County extending until 8.30 p.m. The southern watch box extending until 8.15 p.m. So again, that severe thunderstorm warning, you can see this strong line of storms. Not only are we dealing with torrential rainfall, but there is a ton of dangerous lightning within these storms as well as the potential to be seeing winds over 60 miles per hour quarter size hail as these storms are moving west you can see and about to enter into downtown Tampa within this area of storms we've seen over 1300 lightning strikes 
So this is definitely a storm you want to be indoors as it's rolling through and moving off towards the west. You can see some very heavy rainfall through parts of Wesley Chapel, south through Temple Terrace, all the way down through Gibsonton, Apollo Beach, entering now into South Tampa. A ton of lightning, which is why we would recommend you be inside. But also, we do have the potential to see some hail. This is a look at our vertically integrated liquid. Just gives us a perspective of if we could be seeing hail within these strong storms. And you can see where we're seeing these brightly colored blues and purple. This is the area where we're likely seeing some of that hail falling. So taking a step back, you can see elsewhere fairly quiet right now. Just this one area we're watching, mainly in Hillsborough County and also the southern portions of Pasco County, where we have severe storms that are rolling off towards the west. So if you're in downtown Tampa, parts of Pinellas County, Pasco County, make sure you're staying indoors as these storms roll through. We'll have more coming up on your full forecast in a few minutes. Guys. Over the weekend, police arrested more than 300 demonstrators. 125 were arrested Saturday night in Baton Rouge, where Alton Sterling was shot to death last week. One of those protesters was D. Ray McKeeson. He's become one of the best known civil rights leaders in the country. He spoke to a crowd of reporters when he bailed out of jail. Uh, the only people that were violent last night were the Baton Rouge Police Department. Uh, the protesters remain peaceful both here and across the country. Um, Again, I remain deeply disappointed in the Baton Rouge Police Department, and I'm hopeful that the Department of Justice uh, intervenes both in the death of Alton and with the way that they treat protesters. McKeeson met with President Obama about race relations earlier this year. He also ran for mayor of Baltimore. Rochester's police department is being investigated tonight after officers arrested two TV reporters during a protest in New York. Police arrested the journalist on live TV. You can actually hear the frustration from the anchors as they watch their reporters get handcuffed and dragged away. Your protester Justin, Justin Carter, Justin Carter, Justin Carter being, arrested. being arrested. Oh, come on. Being arrested. This is a journalist doing his job Justin. out there. And I, I like to... Uh, Justin, um, I'm going to try... Carla and Carla Claire, Claire being, being taken, taken into custody. Uh, this is, Justin Carter. Where Wait, is our police chief sorry. and where is the mayor right now? Uh, you know, we are covering this story. Carla was wearing and, a you know, 13 wham shirt. Is, they were eventually released without being charged. The police chief and the mayor both apologized. The TV station issued a statement that, quote, no society can be fully secure if journalists cannot freely report on important events that affect the people of a community. Their son orchestrated the deadliest attack on law enforcement since 9-11. Tonight, Micah Johnson's parents are revealing some new details about him. Johnson killed five officers when he ambushed a police protest in Texas last week. His parents told The Blaze that the man responsible for killing police actually once wanted to become an officer. They say he even voluntarily enlisted in the Army, but drastically changed when he came back from Afghanistan. The ideal that he thought of our government, of what he thought the military represented. It just didn't live up to his expectation. I didn't see it coming. I, I love my son with all my heart. I hate what he did. President Obama will head to Dallas tomorrow to speak at a memorial service for the five slain police officers and give condolences to their loved ones. We are learning new information tonight about some alarming video. A security guard shot at two men inside a Ebor parking garage all of it caught on camera. That man is now charged with aggravated assault with a firearm, battery, and tampering with evidence. Now, all of this happened early Sunday morning. Here in the video, you can see Everroy for Carson push one of the victims. Police say he fired four shots. Coming up in just 30 minutes, Jamel Lene shows us what led up to this confrontation. Near tonight, two bailiffs are dead and several other, in other people are injured after a shooting at a courthouse in Michigan. Turns out an inmate there fired the shots inside the Berean County Courthouse in St. Joseph today. A deputy sheriff was also shot. He is in stable condition. Several civilians were hurt. The shooter was killed. We're working on getting more details about what actually took place there. An amazing rescue caught on camera in a very unusual place. Inmates in Texas busted out of a courthouse holding room as they rushed to help a corrections officer. Those inmates were in a minimum security holding room when the corrections officer suddenly slumped over and became unresponsive. Well, those inmates used the radio on his collar to get help. Eventually, other officers arrived and called for EMS. He is now doing okay.
Here's what's making headlines in politics tonight. Senator Bernie Sanders is expected to endorse his one-time rival, Hillary Clinton, at a rally in New Hampshire tomorrow. This comes after weeks of private negotiations between the camps and pleas for unity from Democratic Party officials. There is a new poll from the Washington Post today that shows most Americans believe the FBI should have criminally charged Clinton for her use of a private email server while she was Secretary of State. 56% of American adults disapprove of the FBI's decision. 35% say they do approve. However, 58% said the issue would not affect their vote in the 2016 presidential election. Speaking to a crowd in Virginia, Donald Trump addressed veterans' issues, vowing to crack down on VA employees who fail in their duties. Trump outlined a 10-point plan that he claims will better serve veterans. He was joined by New Jersey governor and potential running mate Chris Christie. Trump touched on the Dallas shooting, saying that he would support police while fighting crime. He also criticized Hillary Clinton, calling her, quote, the secretary of the status quo. And House Speaker Paul Ryan will take the stage at the Republican National Convention next week. The Speaker is calling for Republican unity ahead of the general election. Other high-profile Republicans like Mitt Romney, former President George W. Bush, and Senator John McCain all say they will not attend the RNC. And both upcoming national conventions will be presented live on Twitter. A simulcast of CBSN, the News Division streaming service, will appear on Twitter whenever the convention is in session. The RNC starts Monday. The DNC starts July 25th. And News Channel 8 will bring you live coverage from both events. Keith Cates going to be there live in Cleveland next week and Philadelphia after that. Coming up next on News Channel 8 at 8 on Great 38. You've probably seen a lot of kids and young adults doing just this, playing Pokemon Go. It's the biggest craze around the nation right now. And Sarasota police are worried that this game could cause some problems. I'll explain. You're watching Tampa Bay's most convenient primetime newscast. This is News Channel 8 at 8 on Great 38.